Hey, everybody. My name is Josh Brothheim. I'm the training manager at Sumo Logic, uh, based out of uh, Portland, Oregon. And I'm going to be leading today's session. Uh, I have Ona Nelson uh, assisting today. So, uh, hey, Ona. Oh, you're out there somewhere. Um, Throwing you on the spot. There yeah. you are. Um, so Ona's going to be helping out with the chat section. So uh, if you guys have any questions throughout today, uh, post them in the chat and either she'll answer them directly or if we feel it's appropriate for a broader group discussion, uh, I might, you know, raise it. Um, but um, otherwise, uh, she's going to be your uh, kind of communication method for today. And feel free to ask questions. That's why she's here. So uh, let, let's, uh, you know, uh, take it, not, uh, you know, make good use of her time, certainly. Um, people are still coming in and that's great. So uh, you haven't missed anything yet. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, start to talk about the uh, agenda for today. So um, what are we going to be talking about for the next period of time? Well, here's our agenda. And hopefully, actually, to make things even more correct, let's make sure we're at the right class. So today's is uh, Cloud Sim Fundamentals. Um, so you might have attended another Cloud Sim class. Uh, we have an administration class. Uh, but the fundamentals, as you might expect, are going to go through the fundamentals of <laughs> Cloud Sim, hence the name. So that's what we're here to discuss. I'm going to turn off my video just to save a little bandwidth. OK. And uh, as far as the agenda goes, here it is. And we'll stick to it pretty closely. So uh, we're going to start with a review of Cloud Sim Data Pipeline, what it is and what it means. And then we're going to do some labs today. Uh, we want to make this interactive. Like with our other classes, we don't want to just read slides to you for a few hours because that's not fun to anybody. Um, so we're going to do some interactive labs. So we're going to take a look at that Cloud Sim Data Pipeline, what it is, do some labs, log into the Cloud Sim environment and check it out. We're going to discuss threat investigation with Cloud Sim. Then going to do a lab where we start to look at insights in uh, the Cloud Sim environment. And then talk about customizing tuning Cloud Sim and then doing some labs that bring those, uh, those uh, tools um, and usage uh, to good use. So, um, and then we're going to also take an exam today. So uh, we've set aside three hours for today. I know the schedule said three and a half. That's, we're not going to be together that long. Um, so we're going to be together for three hours and probably less than that. Um, the first two hours are going to be devoted to what you see on the screen right now. So the labs, the, uh, the slides, um, that kind of uh, discussion of uh, what, you know, what everything is and how it works together. And then we've set aside an hour for the exam. So at the end of today, after those two hours, you'll take an exam. You won't need all the whole hour, but it's allocated for you. Um, and we'll discuss kind of the ground rules for, for that exam. I don't want you to get too stressed about it. Uh, if you've taken an exam with Sumo Logic before, it's very similar in the uh, in the uh, criteria of how it works, not the not the questions, of course. But um, so that's kind of the game plan for today. Uh, as mentioned, and for people still coming in, uh, if you have any questions throughout today's session, go ahead and put them in the chat, and um, away we go. Uh, a couple of rewards for you today. So for attending today's session and getting the certification at the end of the class, so there is an end there, um, we want to reward you. So typically, of course, in person, we would offer some swag and some t-shirt that doesn't really fit too well or socks that are mismatched. Well, we want to give you some food here. So once you're done with the exam later today, in uh, about three hours or so, uh, shoot an email to training at sumologic.com and go ahead and attach your uh, certificate and we'll send you out a $15 Uber Eats voucher. So uh, go ahead and enjoy that. And then we also have another promotion going on um, for our, uh, we call it our Sumo 6. Um, and if you pass six of our certifications and they're current, um, you can go ahead and uh, we'll send you a free backpack. So the backpack you see right there. So if you uh, complete those six certifications and they're current, you can just send us an email at training at sumologic.com as well. And we'll, we'll take you and hook you up with that uh, backpack. So want to offer that. So trying to get some swag out to you, even though we, we can't do it in person. All right, now let's get to some actual content. Um, all of the, the free stuff is probably more enjoyable at some point, but let's talk about Cloud Sim, why we're here. So Cloud Sim data pipeline, what is it? Well, what is Cloud Sim first? That's probably a better place to start. Cloud Sim is a cloud-based enterprise grade security information and event management system. And that's where Sim comes from security information and event management. So that, there's your acronym, acronym for the day. Um, the Cloud Sim is going to leverage Sumo Logic's core functionality, including data collection, ingestion, storage, as well as threat intelligence. Cloud Sim is a purchased add-on with an ever-expanding library of content designed for security operations. Because it's designed for larger data volumes, most organizations need to ingest a large amount of data each day for insights to surface in Cloud Sim. 
So let's take a look at this pipeline that I was referred to earlier and let's get a visual component here. And so Cloud Sim is a very powerful. It's going to take millions of log messages and pull them down into a handful of actionable security insights. So going from the top left all the way to the bottom right of our pipeline here. Now there's going to be steps across this pipeline. First is going to be the collection. Logs are going to be collected and ingested by Sumo Logic and turned into messages. Once those logs and data is turned into a message, those the information within said message is going to be parsed, mapped, and enriched and turned into a cloud SIM record. Now, once we have a record, we're going to go ahead and compare it to rules. And that's what's happening on this third line. If a rule is triggered, an entity is extracted, a severity score is assigned, and a signal is created. And we're going to talk about all those things in much more detail. Once you have enough signals within the same entity cluster together, then they become an insight. Now for today, we're going to be focusing on the later stages of this uh, pipeline, specifically the rules and investigation portion, so the bottom two uh, tiers of the pipeline. Uh, if you want to learn more about the ingestion, ingestion and collection, uh, that's focused in our Cloud Sim administration class. So I um, encourage you to take that next, not necessarily directly after this, and, uh, but um, at some point in the future. Now I'm going to talk about that higher level of the of this um, this pipeline, even though we're not going to focus on those first two tiers, still want to discuss them just to make sure we, we are comfortable with understanding how they function to some degree. As mentioned, admin goes into it much deeper, but we still want to get a basic understanding. So let's say we have a company. In this case, we're going to use Sumo Logic Coffee, which is an example we use in other classes. Um, Sumo Logic Coffee is collecting and ingesting millions of log messages into Sumo Logic. Now, typically, you can use these messages right away in Sumo Logic apps. The data is in there, you query it, and you do what you do. But with Cloud Sim Enterprise, your admin is going to need to enable data forwarding. The admin is also going to need to create log mappings, field extraction rules, or complete other pre-processing steps to extract the right data. Now, you, and in the fundamentals level, will not do that. Um, but it is a required feature within the admin class, and that's where we discussed it as well. So certainly, if you want to get more advanced, administration oh. is, is going to get you there. Now, let's go ahead and go to that second level. Before Cloud Sim can generate security insights, the log messages need to go through processing first, which I described a little bit earlier. The processing is going to have Cloud Sim process the messages into records. Each record is going to contain the information from a message which is parsed into key value pairs, which are mapped to a Cloud Sim schema and enriched with other data. So here's an example of uh, a visual kind of component to go along with that, um, that description. So let's follow a simple log message down this pipeline. First, we have the message that's being parsed and extracted from the record. So here we have our record, uh, our log message, and now we're gonna start to parse. Now on the left-hand side is the input or how that data came in. It might be read, re, you know, human readable. It may not be, but we're going to kind of not mess with it. We're going to modify it today. And what's going to happen is it's going to be mapped into a set of key value pairs. This process is going to fix the basic formatting as well. This step creates semi-structured data. So instead of having IP-127-0-0-1, the parsing step is going to extract the IP address into a key value pair where the key is source device IP and the value is 127.0.0.1, and those hyphens have now been normalized to dots. And this information is mapped onto the cloud SIM schema. Finally, the record is going to be enriched with information from match lists or threat intelligence security, uh, threat intelligence databases, such as its threat level. Those normalized records are then going to be sent down the cloud SIM pipeline and compared to rules. So let's continue kind of down that pipeline, if you will. Each record ingested into Cloud Sim is going to be compared to hundreds of built-in and custom rules. If a trigger, if a rule triggers, an entity is extracted and a signal is created. If a record matches the criteria specified in a rule, then Cloud Sim is going to create a signal. 
The severity is a number between one and 10 that tells cloud sim how serious a potential threat is. When a signal is created, it's going to contain a name, an entity, a severity, a stage, and a description. A signal is always going to contain, at a minimum, an entity and a severity. The data is defined by the rule and is later used by Cloud Sim's Insight Engine's algorithm. Now, the entity in a signal, what is that? I've alluded to that word entity. What is it referring to? Well, specifically, we're talking about in a signal something like an IP address, a MAC address, a host name. Um, and the entity is going to tell us who or what was involved in the event that the record described. Entities are going to be extracted from records. Every signal has an entity. The entity's activity score is the sum of all the severity scores of all the, sig of the, all the signals it appears in. And so we're going to start to look at those uh, shortly. So that takes us down to that signal level in that pipeline. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper to the last portion. Because Cloud Sim is going to take everything one step further and correlate those signals into a manageable number of insights. An insight is a group of signals clustered around a single entity. So around an IP address, around a MAC address, something like that. An insight is created when the sum of the severity scores of the signals with the same entity goes above a certain activity score within a certain time frame. Now, by default, this is going to be an activity score of 12 within the last 14 days. So we're looking for the trigger by default, and we're going to use that default today, of an activity score of 12 within the last 14 days. 12 or higher, that's going to trigger a, um, a, an, an insight. So, for example, if a rule was triggered with a severity of 5, and then 10 days later, another rule with the same entity and severity of 5 was triggered, the total activity score would be a 10 in the last 14 days, and an insight would not be created. If those two same rules had a severity score of six instead of five, then an insight would be created because there were to be a six plus a six, which gets us to 12 over 14 days. So that's how an insight is created, at least the kind of the math behind it. Once an insight is created, you can start a security investigation and uh, take actions like alerting SOC teammates or executing playbooks. All right, so I wanted to show the interface. This is, you're going to see this in the, uh, in the UI pretty soon, uh, probably in about the next 10 minutes. But I wanted to show this screen just before we jump in to get a feel for it. So the entire data pipeline can be thought of as a funnel with your log messages going in the top and insights coming out the bottom, like we saw in that data pipeline. Log messages come in, out of the bottom, the insights. Now, so while we might ingest millions of logs, we're only going to get a few hundred signals and maybe a handful of insights. This insight radar, as you see it here in the screenshot, within the Cloud Sim UI, uses this funnel shape from a top-down perspective. And as you go towards the center, there's going to be fewer items. So the outer edge of the ring, whoops, sorry. Um, the outer edge of the ring is going to represent the records that are ingested, this dark blue. It's going to show the relative number of records in the last 24 hours. So like a clock kind of starting at midnight and going around, we see 24 hours broken out into, uh, into groupings, if you will, time, time slices. Um, and the spikes that we see here, or dips, so here we see a spike, uh, dip, here we see a spike, that's going to represent times where there were more or less records than what the average was. So we're getting a visual uh, understanding of how many records are coming in, a lot, a little, relative to the last 24 hours. The middle circle, which is going to be this light blue with these bar uh, graph feel, um, this is going to represent the signals that are being generated from those records. So each bar is going to represent the number of signals. Once again, we're taking a lot of information, distilling it down to less information. And when we get to the innermost circle, we're going to have our most distilled information, which is going to be our insights. And those are going to be things that are correlated from the signals. And so we're going to have these triangles. And what we're going to see shortly is we're going to have hundreds, thousands of, of records. And it's going to be distilled down into four, five, 10 insights and really can save you uh, your, and your uh, users a lot of time. All right. So let's go ahead. Um, let's 
jump into the UI at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share a couple things here. Uh, the first is I'm going to go ahead and in the chat, I'm going to post a PDF, which is going to have the lab guide we're going to use. So let me get that. Okay, so that should be in chat now. The other thing we're going to do is once you have that lab guide, we're going to go ahead and log in together into the environment. And so here are going to be those credentials that we'll utilize for today. So go ahead and make sure you got that PDF. And at the same time, go ahead and um, uh, let's log in together. So the credentials we're going to use, if you've played with us before, you might be familiar with these credentials, um, are going to be as such. The website is service.sumologic.com, which hopefully you're familiar with. Uh, if you're not, that's fine, of course. Uh, the username we're going to use is training plus analyst number, 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 and we want you to select a three-digit number. So training plus analyst 007, training plus analyst 241789, pick three-digit numbers. If you use the same three-digit numbers as somebody else, not a big deal. We have a pretty small group today. Um, now it looks like many of you used to have used these before, so thank you for logging in right away. And that password is SEPT 2021 exclamation point. So capital SEPT 2021 exclamation point. I'm going to go ahead and log in here as well. And actually, let me log in as a, I'm going to log in as an equivalent user. So make sure we're home. We're on a level uh, playing field for today, if you will. So it's going to be analyst. I'm going to pick numbers. If anybody has problems getting in, please let us know. Um, to be transparent, it's probably going to be a typo, uh, but uh, but uh, not joking. Please, you know, please let us know if you have an issue getting in. Uh, what you're getting into, let me go ahead and just clean this up a little bit, is our interface. Um, so you know, you may have never been in Sumo. I hope you've been in before, but if not, um, you know. This, this, this is it. <laughs> this is what we're looking at. Now, what we're looking at first, and let's go ahead and start to utilize our lab guide here. And so I have my lab guide just in a separate tab. So I'm just going to keep it out of the way. Just I don't want to have too much on my main screen here. But we're going to go ahead and start with lab zero. And so lab zero is logging into the system, which we're starting to do and hopefully doing successfully. Now, we've logged into Sumo Logic UI. What we want to go ahead and show you and how have you do as well is go into the cloud sim enterprise environment. So on the far left, there's going to be a black bar. Hopefully, if you don't see a black bar, you might uh, have this type of view and you'll go ahead and just click on that uh, hamburger icon and expand it out. And then in the black bar, go down to cloud sim enterprise and click on it. And what should happen is you are now in the cloud sim enterprise environment. So you're going to go ahead and kind of pause for a moment just to make sure everybody's in there. A uh, question about the credentials. The credentials that you're utilizing will be good for the rest of the month. Um, in October, a new set of credentials will appear. Um, I'll show you how to get those access to those new credentials uh, uh, when, when we take the exam. It's in the same, same uh, environment. So good question. Um, so we should now be in this view. So once again, just to make sure everybody's together, we should have been in, uh, let me just I'm going to cheat here and just go ahead just to show you those steps again. So once again, log in, black bar, Cloud Sim Enterprise, and then we get this view. So hopefully everybody's together. And if you're not, don't be shy. Uh, oh, Graham has joined us as well. Great. So thanks, Graham. Uh, he'll be helping answer questions as well. Um, Oops, sorry, I think I just muted you. Um, so what we see, so what do we see here? Well, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But before we do, we just want to point out on the top left here, the Sumo icon. This Sumo icon is going to return you to this page within the Cloud Sim Enterprise. So as we're navigating today, if you ever get lost, just go ahead and click on that top left and you'll be brought to this screen. Um, now, what are we looking at? Well, let's take a look at lab one and start to understand what's going on in the screen because there's a lot going on. A lot of good stuff, but a lot going on. So what we're seeing here in the center of the screen as advertised or just promoted a few moments ago was or is our Cloud Sim Enterprise environment, our heads up display. We see 
the, in the center are insight radar. And we see those circles, we see the bar graph, we see those triangles, those insights, and we're gonna go into those and play around with them shortly. This look and feel is kind of cool looking. I hope I'm using the term cool properly. I guess it depends who you are. In that it has a video game feel to it. If you've played video games recently, well, even fairly recently, they all, a lot of them have a heads up display type of interface. And this was intentionally designed for us from uh, an individual who was involved in uh, the design of World of Warcraft, which is a very popular online game or was very popular. Um, and so it's meant to have a kind of interactive feel of getting a good bunch of information kind of shoved in your face, if you will. Um, so we see in the center that ring that we just we were talking about. Now on the left hand side of the screen, we see some information, we see some stats, and these stats are going to be helpful for us. It's also going to be helpful for us with these stats to just get an understanding of how much data we're dealing with and what this, this thing that we're showing you, this cloud sim, is really doing. So if you look on the top left, what we see for the last 24 hours, and feel free to you know, play around in here, change the time period. But for the last 24 hours, we see 636,000 records. So over the last 24 hours, 636,000 records have come into Sumo Logic, into Cloud Sim. From those more than half a million records, we have, or the system has distilled it down to 11,000 signals. Now from those 11,000 signals, 16 insights have been created. And in that 16 insights, essentially the system is saying, of these 636,000 things that have come in, here are 16 things you should look at and decide what to do with. And that's what's being presented to us. We also get, you know, kind of in that video game look and feel, we get insights as far as uh, status. So things are going to start off in a new status, but as you work them, they, you might mark them in progress, you might close them, and so the statuses will change. For this portion of the lab, lab one, we want to play around with the, um, the, uh, the, the time feature ability in here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of do the lab together and you know, feel free to put your answers in the, uh, into the chat. So first question is, how many records have been ingested in the last hours? Well, we'll go ahead, we'll use our time um, selector here, select eight, last eight hours, and we should see that the amount of records is, I guess I shouldn't reveal it, but uh, no, no prizes for today, uh, 210,000. We also see here there's been a decrease by 2%. That might be helpful to know that we're having less records ingested, or as we'll see shortly, having more insights or less in, or more or less insights. And so this is giving us some, uh, some, some some way to evaluate what's going on and compare it to the periods. How many signals have been created in the last seven days? Take our time selector. And the question is around how many signals, but once again, just to get a better feel for the power that's going on here. In the last seven days, the system has looked at 4 million records and found 43 things that we should look at. That's, you know, that's an improvement, a good use of my time. Not having to go through 4 million things manually, but getting these things distilled out of, hey, look at this, and we're going to start to look at those things uh, in just a few moments. Uh, finally, let's see, uh, last one, as well, just to finish up the lab one. Uh, uh, 1C is how many insights have been created in the last 24 hours. Once again, just play with our little time selector. And there we see also that increase or that percentage uh, percentage increase, which is certainly potentially alarming. But um, this, this is a training environment, so anything can happen. Now, in the center of the screen is that HUD that we've you know, referred to, alluded to a few times. And I want to play around with that a little bit just to get, get you uh, to get, get a feel for that. So as we see, there's some more questions. Um, so as far as uh, what, uh, so if we're looking at the last 24 hours, uh, what time were the most records ingested in the last 24 hours? And so what we're going to utilize is for the records, we're using the blue section of the bar, of the uh, ring, and it's refreshing. So you see, might periodically see it uh, flash. And so we're looking for the highest spike. And so what we're seeing is at 4 a.m., 18,000 records were ingested, which has been the most over the last 24 hours. The fewest amount of records have been, um, uh, I guess, right about here, uh, just happening right now, just a few moments ago, 3,000 records. Uh, uh, 2B, uh, uh, um, oh, good, very good point, Donna, thank you. Uh, the time might vary based on time zone, absolutely. So I'm in Pacific time zone, your spike might be at, uh, you know, 7 a.m., depending on if you're on the East Coast or what have you. So, yeah, thank you for uh, uh, bringing that up. 
Uh, last question in here, uh, what time were the uh, most signals created in the last 24 hours? So same idea, we use our middle ring now for signals and we look for the spike and there we see um, the amount. We also see a, um, which is kind of helpful here, um, the, as I, I, we kind of refer to them as time slices, um, we see that these are broken out into 20 minute chunks. So here in this 20 minute ring or point, there were 386 signals. Before that, there were you know, 286 and that, that might be interesting to us. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and now, um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at, uh, let's look at part three of this, um, this portion of the lab. So lab one, part three. So in part three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to the top navigation bar. So we haven't gone into these yet, but this is going to allow us to start to um, go to specific things we wanna look at. Do we wanna look at the insights? Do we wanna look at the records, et cetera? That gives us that control on the top. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna to go to content and we're gonna to go to rules. So on the top uh, bar, go ahead and click content and then go ahead and click rules. We're gonna to wanna to remove any filter as the lab says, there shouldn't be one, but if there is, uh, just remove it. And what you should see is, so once again, content rules, we should see the rules that are in the system. So these are all the different rules that have been either configured or configured for us that are going to take a look at what's going on. Many of these rules, the majority of them, uh, probably 660 of them or so, are Sumo Logic rules. So Sumo Logic is gonna consistently add new rules, update new rules as appropriate, but you can also create your own. What we want to show here is the ability to utilize filters within uh, to look for these rules, to look for specific ones. So we'll go ahead and just play with the filters now a little bit. So for example, if we want to see how many rules have a name that contains firewall, we can go ahead and use our filters here. So to do the filter, we're going to collect click on filter, click on the field. We want to do name contains firewall. And what we should get are 11 rules. And so if we wanted to check out the firewall rules, well, now we're looking at them. Now we can also modify our filter to not just look at the name, but look at other values. Severity score might be important to us. As discussed earlier, when things go over that severity score of 12, that's an important kind of milestone. It creates an insight in within 14 days. So what if you want to look at those rules and you want to see severity scores that are in this case in the lab uh, greater than eight. So to use the filtering here, I'm going to get rid of my other filter in A. I don't really need it. Didn't specify, but uh, I'm going to keep it clean. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose to find the filter for severity score. And then I can do greater than eight, so greater than eight. When I run it, it's gonna give me two results. And I should see those results, uh, well, I should see them below, of course, but then I should see those severity scores that are being displayed are above an eight because that's what I'm you know, requested from the system. Um, and then finally, uh, let's look at that 3C. Uh, we'll talk about tactics in a little bit. Uh, but if we wanted to find uh, how many rules detect the persistence tactic, uh, we can go ahead and um, uh, we can just do persistence. Let's see, is tactic contains persistence. Maybe one thing I would add here, Josh, while we're doing this is you may find yourself in the Cloud Sim portal with all of your insights handled or assigned to someone else, uh, hopefully. And if you find yourself in that scenario, this is when you might go into the, uh, you know, searching for certain signals uh, to do almost like threat hunting. So I just wanted to include the context of, you know, in this case, we're looking at rules um, and we might also look at, you know, rules or signals to do some threat hunting if there's no open insights to actually dive into as a security analyst. Yeah, and that's a good point. Certainly the, the way where we've kind of 
been sort of promoting uh, is so far as looking at the heads up display, seeing what's active, but you might want to be more proactive and start to dig in here. And that's yeah, where the, the filtering can, can be helpful. Um, all right, let's take a look at, um, let's do step four now, um, which is the entities. So what we want to go in here is now, instead of content, go to entities. And these entities that are being displayed to us, remember, are going to be, um, uh, I almost wanted to say proper nouns, uh, but they're like that in that they're going to be IP addresses, MAC addresses, host names, things like that. And so we can start to look at the entities that have been found. Once again, just go to the top, go to entities. And once again, we can also start to use our filter. So if we want to look at, uh, uh, once again, um, the activity score uh, being, what do we have here, greater than five, or my, this is greater than five, I should do, uh, let me try that again. Because I don't think we have, I don't know that we have any entities greater than five. Try that one more time. Activity score greater than five. All right, so there's not anything in there, but that's why we're searching. So uh, that was intentional. Um, let's see, how many entities have an activity score of zero? Well, all the entities we have here have a zero. And so, but we could use the filtering for that as well. All right, uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, da, da, da. let's go ahead and jump back into the cloud uh, sim head uh, HUD. So just as a reminder to get back to the home page, we'll go to the top left and click on the HUD icon. And now we'll be brought back to that heads up display. All right. Uh, let me go back to the lab guide. Uh, excuse me, the uh, slide deck. I think we want to go over a few more slides and then we'll jump back into the lab. So. Um, just to make sure that we're on the right track. We just live lab one, so good. Um, but now let's go ahead and um, let's get a little bit deeper. So what we're gonna do now is get started with thread inf investigation. Oops, sorry, jumpy mouse. So in this course, we're gonna use data and examples from some fictional companies like you see here on the right-hand side of the screen. So we're gonna use Financial Logic, Sumo Pharma, and Sumo Coffee. Financial Logic is a major player in the banking industry. They meet all the GPD and G, uh, GPDR, excuse me, GDPR, excuse me, and other international compliance standards, but worry their big investors are still targets for hackers. So that's their concern is GPDR and uh, hacking and, and um, protecting. Summa Pharma, Pharma is a healthcare company that ships prescription meds to patients. They meet all HIPAA standards and guidelines, but they're concerned about uh, data privacy. They want to monitor all their data to make sure their patients are safe and healthy in the digital world. Summa Low Coffee is a small retail business with a big tech idea, automating the entire coffee business from bean to cup. In addition to consumer protections like uh, PCI DSS, their main concerns include keeping computing costs down while their startup grows. So these are a couple scenarios that we may play with today. Well, she is one of these, but I uh, just want to kind of keep these in mind of different use cases um, that we'll possibly get into. Now, before we do, threat and oh, it's kind of what, what Graham was alluding to earlier, threat investigation is reactive, while threat hunting is proactive. Typically, threat investigation happens in response to an alert. Once you've investigated a threat, you can hunt for similar threats and take precautionary steps to prevent attacks from happening again. Threat investigation is an iterative scientific process, much like troubleshooting. In both threat investigation and troubleshooting, you first monitor your system. Once an anomaly is detected, you can make a hypothesis about how it happened and diagnose the problem. As you dig deeper, you may revise this initial hypothesis and find more clues about why or how the attack or error happened. As you investigate and trace the events, try to answer as many of those WH questions as you can about the event to tell the story. So who is behind the event? What assets did the event affect or impact? Where did the event occur? When did the event occur? Why did the event occur? And how did the event occur? 
Finally, you can then take action to resolve the issue. There are many actions you might take in response to an incident. For example, you might work with your IT team to isolate and wipe laptops that are infected with malware to prevent spread of malicious code. Or you might work with your HR team to enforce mandatory anti-phishing training among all employees to prevent future attacks. So what I want to talk about next is a day in the life of a SOC analyst. Cloud Sim can help with every step of the threat investigation process, and that's what we're trying to go through today. Cloud Sim is going to automatically detect and monitor potential threats by analyzing millions of records and distilling them into a handful of insights with a low false positive rate. You can choose insights from the home page of Cloud Sim in the Insight Radar, under the Insight Activity Pane, or from the Insights panel. Once you choose an insight, you can dig through all the raw logs and signals to conduct deep dive investigations and even proactive threat hunts. You can organize your thoughts, make hypotheses, and take notes about your investigation in the comments of each insight. This will share your ideas with your SOC teammates and help you keep track of your threat investigation. You can also take direct certain action or excuse me you can always take also take certain actions directly from the insight you can email teammates create jira tickets execute playbooks and many other custom actions within the actions button finally there we go you can update the insight you can mark it as in progress or closed when you close it you can mark it as resolved false positive duplicate or no action Updating the status correctly will help the Cloud Sim Insight Engine produce more accurate insights for your org in the future. Now, of course, this process will repeat each day as new insights are generated for you to investigate. I want to talk about the MITRE ATT&CK matrix, something you may be familiar with, you may not be, either way is fine, um, but it's something that we're going to allude to a little bit. What we're talking about here is the MITRE ATT&CK matrix. What it is, it's uh, published by a group called MITRE. They're a nonprofit uh, research organization. And the ATT&CK here, the, and it's spelled kind of funny, um, stands for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge. So that's where that acronym ATT and uh, CK, uh, but it's pronounced ATT&CK. This framework organizes and categorizes the tactics and techniques that hacktivists, super criminals, national, uh, nation states, scripters, and other adversaries use. This includes attacks like, like exfiltrating databases, installing malware, stealing credentials, and all the other nefarious activities you and your SOC team are trying to stop. CloudSim uses these same tactic names for the stages of signals and the names of insights. Once you're familiar with attack, navigating CloudSim's insights page becomes easier. So certainly if you are familiar with it, great, of course. If not, you'll see kind of reference throughout. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, just to put it in the chat here, uh, just a link to that uh, MITRE uh, information in case you're curious. Um, all right, let's get back to slides or uh, get back to the labs, just a couple more, a uh, few more slides here and then we'll, we'll get into them. Now, Let's return to our fictional company before for those before those labs, and specifically which MITRE attack tactics and techniques they might prioritize. So based on you know what we discussed earlier, financial logic, for example, they need to keep their uh, clients' data secure. Credential access is going to be a, a concern since all customers have user credentials tied to their financial accounts. So financial logic, they're con concerned about credential access. Summa Pharma is concerned about their patients' privacy and compliance with, stip, with standards like HIPAA. Now, of course, credential access is important to them, but that's not their primary concern. Exfiltration of private data, that's their major concern. Sumo Logic Coffee, those individuals that are monitoring their infrastructure make sure the apps are as efficient as possible. Of course, they're concerned about credential access and exfiltration, but execution is really their particular concern because so many, uh, since many executable files utilize precious company resources, 
they want to make sure that execution is running smoothly. So all these organizations, of course, are concerned about security as a whole, but they do have their priorities on what they want to focus on. And that's what we're going to go ahead and utilize in a lab example in about 10 minutes or so. Now, threat investigation with Cloud Sim. The insight page is going to show you everything you need to start unraveling the security event. When signals cluster together, Cloud Sim uses their tactics and techniques to name the insights they generate. The insights name can point you to how the event occurred or why the adversary is behaving that way. For example, a tactic name like discovery or persistence, that's going to show the reasons the adversary has. Similarly, tactic names like initial access or execution can tell a little about the method the adversary used. These names are just starting points, however, and you may need to revise your hypothesis as you continue your investigation. So for example, on the screen here, an insight is named credential access. So why did the event occur? Well, probably something related to somebody bad trying to use those credentials. How did the event occur? By accessing our data. And so we're starting to get some of that insight. Now, we will also have access to see this timeline, which is going to be very helpful. The timeline is going to tell us the when, that WH question, when the event occurred. We can see whether the sig each signal was triggered at the same time or sequentially, as well as whether everything happened over minutes, hours, or even days. By default, insights are related signals that cluster together within the last 14 days. In this example here, we, we see some signals occurred several days before the others, but three clustered closely together more recently. So on the far left of the screen, we have a signal. We have one here kind of in the middle of the screen. And then we see on the far right, a bunch of stuff happened together. And that's going to be helpful for us to understand that bunch of stuff and make it better understandable than just calling it a bunch of stuff. But timelines are going to be very valuable to get a feel of like I said, WH, when it occurred. Now, the entities within each signal are going to point to some more of that WH, the who, the what, the where of that event. An entity might point to the IP address of a hacked device. It might point to the location of an adversary, the location of a database that leaked, the owner of a website or domain, or some other piece of the puzzle. Each insight only has one entity it's clustered around. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take a look at some insights. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully we're still logged in. If you got timed out, I apologize for that. You might have to log back in. You shouldn't, though. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and participate in lab two. So, whoop. so I'm going to go ahead and grab my lab book. And now in lab two, you'll notice that there are a few different um, examples we can utilize. So what we have the ability here is to utilize our financial logic story, our Sumo logic coffee story, or our um, a Sumo pharma story. I'm gonna use the first one, financial logic. I'm gonna show that one and use it for our lab to play around with today. Feel free to take a look at the others. Uh, we will be taking a break shortly as well. And so there'll be time for you to just kind of not mess around, play around in there. Um, but let's go ahead and go through lab 2A together. So let me get out of my presentation. Let me get back into heads up display. And now let's go ahead and like I said, walk through this together. So here we see that heads up display. And what we want to do is we want to go specifically to insights. So we're going to go to the top and we're going to click on insights. And now we're going to see all those insights. Now we're going to look for a specific insight here for our activity. We want to go ahead and look at the insight called persistence with initial access. And we want to find out what happened. So that's what we're going to look for. So we're going to go ahead and look for the insight name is or contains either way uh, persistence with initial access. Going to go ahead and hit enter and use that filter. I'm going to see a bunch of them and that's okay. So 
want to get through this list of insights. So once again, just those steps was go went up to insight, use the filtering, use name contains or name is, and then persistence with initial access. And then I see a variety of insights here. So I'm just going to kind of take a beat here, just make sure everyone's okay. And that's uh, case sensitive, right? When we're typing in this filter box at the top. It is. Is that a question or a I, I statement? Because I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. It is, right? I, I don't think it is. I yeah. I find that if I type if I type literal like persistent small p, it may not yeah. come up. But if you type in persistence and then choose the actual thing that results, okay, yeah. then it will switch it to a capital P. So that, that's just one thing to watch out for. Is some yeah, no, no. Good call. One other thing is to clear that status is not closed um, because looking at the closed insight will still work for this lab. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, absolutely. So hopefully we're uh, looking at all these insights using, uh, yeah, just looking at all of them. And now what we want to do is start to utilize one of the insights. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, look for um, um, one that's open, although it doesn't really matter, I guess, too much. So we're going to go ahead and look for one of these. I'm going to grab a new one. And what I'm going to see in here is information I was alluding to earlier, but now actually see it within the insight. So we start to see in this... Um, just to explain the screen here, uh, we see this time uh, uh, window um, that we just were talking. So we see here a threat happened, and then we see some other stuff happened. And so this is starting to give us some time information. We see going down details of what was captured. Hey, Josh, can I suggest just going back one um one in your browser just to show one helpful feature for a question yeah, yeah. about workflow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so, so back to the screen. Yeah, I think um, Kevin was asking about some workflow tips. And one thing I suggest there's a con there's like a Kanban cards view in the top right. If you click the vertical, yeah, that one right there. Oh yeah, the board. Yes. Yeah. So this is not going to tell you which one to pick on the left, but when you're thinking about what should I work on first. Um, I might do things like use this view and then use filters or tags. So, you know, filtering by things with higher severities, filtering by things that have been around for longer, filtering by things that are in the new column because, you know, you know that none of your teammates have looked at those yet. So I just wanted to mention that for Kevin, one helpful workflow tip, although this isn't, you know, the, the holistic answer. This is just one tip I have for when you're actually in the platform working with your teammates on, on these insights. Yeah, and, and thank you for reminding me of that card view. Uh, Ona has reminded me before, before and I, I kind of always forget about it, but it, it's a much better view. It really should be probably the default view um, because it does give you that that feel for what's going on now, what you need to dig into. Um, so yeah, thank you for uh, calling that out. Um, so let's go back into our, or from this view, we can click an insight as well. So the, we're still being filtered. So we can go ahead and select one of those insights. And what we're starting to see in here is, once again, that time and down towards the bottom, we're starting to see those events that are being correlated together. And we're starting to get a, a potentially a picture of what has gone on. And that's what we're talking about right now, of course, getting that picture. But we start to see here that first some threat intel, a device IP matched a threat intel file hash. Then nothing happened for a long time. Not a long time, I guess uh, 12 hours or so. Um, longer, probably 18 hours or so. And then what we see are some other events that have taken place. We see the events down here as well. And so we can go ahead and view them and see in chronological order what has happened as well. So what has happened? What do we kind of see going on here? So I'll go ahead and kind of pause. The lab, the lab does describe in the summary what has occurred. So um, don't want you to just read it directly, but we can start to get a feel for what happened. So what, what occurred here? So what we see is a phishing link occurred. So a user got an email that had a phishing link in it. A few moments later, after that phishing link occurred, a malicious file was allowed. 
So that clicker, that user apparently clicked on that phishing link and downloaded whatever file was associated uh, with that email. Then threat detection and threat intelligence rather occurred. So what happened here is that zip file that was downloaded, that malicious file was recognized through an AV scan. And it has a known malicious file hash. Those two signals fired and an insight was created. And so what we have is if we add up our severity scores, we have greater than 12. And so this all combined, all this stuff going on, if you will, into an insight. And so what, what should occur, as the summary says, uh, financial logic should lock the user's account and uh, re-image the machine um, and then uh, decide you know, what was this whole impact. But this is how we're able to start to go ahead and see what occurred uh, within the investigation, within the insight rally, excuse me. All right, uh, let me go back to my slides here. So any questions about that? We didn't do the uh, B or C, feel free to go ahead and, and poke around at those. Um, as mentioned, you'll have credential access uh, these credentials after today. Um, but as we mentioned in that recap, in the financial logic, we saw the phishing link, we saw the potential malware, and it was all categorized together in an insight called persistence with, with initial access. So it was already kind of bundled and given to us of what sort of happened in here, just in the title alone gives us really good, I hate to use the word insight, uh, but ability to see what's going on in there without even looking at it. just the naming here is, is valuable enough. All right, uh, let's see, time-wise we're doing pretty well. Let's, um, let's do a couple more slides here and then we'll probably take a break. But yeah, let's, let's do a few more slides. I think one, one thing I oh, want to just done. mention out loud, yeah. I see some good questions. So enrichments and global confidence. Um, if you see enrichments, there's a link around the enrichment server. So I'll, I'll let the team or I'll let the, the chat read, uh, find that link and read more about what the enrichment server does. But you can basically go get more information. Once you have some findings, you can use the enrichment server feature to enrich those findings. Um, and then the global confidence score is another great way to give yourself a, a kind of optimized workflow. So that Kanban card view and then global confidence scoring, you see on the left near this orange severity, it says global confidence NA. But as you close things out, um, our system learns a global confidence. And so you uh, you know, you'll, you'll probably expect that some of these will be false positives, but our system will learn what's more likely to be a false positive in your environment, which is more like, or which is more likely to not be a false positive. So global confidence scoring is a newer feature that will help you with deciding what to look at first. Higher confidence means, you know, it's more likely a real threat or issue. Cool. Thanks, Graham. Anything else in the chat that uh, is worth... I mean, I'm sure it's all worth repeating for the larger group, but uh, just while we have you. Yeah, I think how our severities calculated will go more in depth there. We've given some high level answers and then uh, let's see what else. There's definitely some good questions. Yeah, back to workflow, the Kanban view, global competence filtering. Um, and then I, I think the learning for global competence is based on your tenant, not like data mining across all, but I'm not totally sure on that. It might be a combination of both and I'll check what the answer is. Cool, thanks Graham. All right, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do a few more slides here. Um, and so um, as the slide says, a deeper dive into threat investigation and threat hunting. So insights are gonna provide a great way for you to uh, uh, get that high level summary of potential security events. Because Cloud Sim or because of Cloud Sim's threat intelligence and sophisticated correlation engine, very few insights are false positives. So they are all worth investigating. However, sometimes you want to dig or investigate deeper to really understand what happened. 
or you might want to do proactive threat hunting work to find potential problems before they begin impacting your system, even if some of what you're looking at are false alarms. The signals tab is going to list all the signals created by rules that have been triggered in your system in the last 14 days by default. That can be changed, but the default is 14 days. Signals provide summaries of potential security threats. Remember, not all signals are security incidences. After all, there are some legitimate reasons why somebody might be logged into two different accounts at the same time or two different devices at the same time, or why they have several failed password attempts on an account. Just because that occurs doesn't mean it's a malicious hacker or it doesn't. And that's where you know these might be false positives. When you click into a signal, you'll have the option to see the full detail of the record it triggered. This includes that information like the IP address, geolocation information, threat level, and other information that's going to help aid in your investigation. The entities tab is going to list all the entities that your rules have uh, detected in the last 14 days by default. Each entity has an activity score associated with it. The activity score is the sum of all the severity scores of all the unique signals associated with that entity. When an entity's activity score reaches 12 or higher, an insight is created. If you have several entities with relatively high activity scores, this might be a good starting point for a threat hunt. Now, context actions. Context actions are going to be found throughout the Cloud Sim UI and are going to be useful for in-depth investigations. Many entities in the insight signals and entity pages have context actions. You can hover next to certain entities and the six dot icon will appear as you're starting to see in here. If context action actions are available for that object. So as you see there that that there we go, the six dots and there we see those options. You can use the context actions to identify the entity into an API call, do a DNS lookup and other tasks. Your admin can even add more or additional custom context actions. Now, using Sumo Logic Search, an in depth threat investigation is going to use most of both CloudSim and Sumo Logic's core tools. There's several ways to bring the information you find in CloudSim back to the Sumo Logic platform. One context action is Sumo Logic Search. Selecting this action, once again, as you see in the image taking place here, uh, will create a log search in Sumo Logic. This way, you can find all the log messages that are associated with that entity, even if it wasn't detected by a rule in Cloud Sim. And we're going to look at that in just a moment in Lab 3. We're going to go through those steps. So taking a entity and looking at it within Sumo Logic Search through the six dot icon context actions, as we call it, the more fancy name. And here's uh, kind of a visual to go along with it. I'll, I'll let it go through because it's a pretty good visual. <laughs> and then we're going to so we're going to do these steps in uh, in just a few moments here. And so now we're searching for that IP address. Yeah, we really don't need to do the lab that this image is showing us Just kidding. Of course, we'll do the lab, but uh, this, is a, this is a great walkthrough. All right, so finally finishing the investigation. In Cloud Sim, there's going to be several different actions you can take on each insight. You can comment on the insight as you did in Lab 2, or close it, or assign a status to it, as you will do in Lab 3. When you close an insight, Cloud Sim is going to use the resolution information to reduce false positives and duplicates further. Assigning a status to the insight lets you keep working on it and keeps track of your progress. You can also assign the insight to yourself or to a colleague and use the action buttons to alert colleagues, create JIRA tickets, send Slack messages, or use other APIs. This action button is customizable, but can only be configured by admin. So if you need a custom action, you're going to want to get with either an admin on your side or a Sumo admin, and they can help facilitate some of that.
All right, um, before we jump into the next lab, I think we're just going to take a quick break now. Um, so a little bit earlier, but I think we'll go ahead and fit in one now, and then we'll go ahead and finish the labs and uh, come back. So let's do a quick break. Let's do like a, let's do a seven minute break. Timing wise, we're doing well. So um, um, yeah, we're doing well, but uh, let's go ahead and just take a quick one now. And if there's any questions, I'm going to throw myself on mute and uh, step out for just a moment, go get a beverage or something. Oop, ah. um, but feel free to go ahead and put those chat questions uh, in the chat and uh, Graham and myself will help answer them. And then and on, excuse me, uh, all three of us will help answer them. So thank you for joining. Uh, let's take a little bio break, get a beverage, get a snack, and then we'll come back and um, uh, finish up the labs and talk about the uh, exam. So thank you again, everybody. And uh, like I said, I'm just going to throw myself on mute here. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you had a nice little break. Still have uh, 10 seconds, so don't want to shortchange you on that one. But uh, let's see, I think there were a little discussion in the chat, but I think we're clear on questions for right now. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, oh, let me get rid of my timer here. Uh, and let's go back into our uh, slide deck, but we're actually going to go into our labs here. So um, what we're going to do is go in uh, straight into lab number three. So within our lab book, we're going to go ahead and uh, get that handy. So let me go and pull that up. And so in lab three, we're going to go ahead and continue our investigation. So we're going to use the same example that we used earlier, which is going to be the financial logic. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, We'll continue with the exercise. So as it says in the lab for lab 3A, um, we're going to go ahead and um, while working for, uh, for financial logic, we receive an alert about an insight called persistence with initial access. We want to use a sumo logic search to continue with this investigation and then update the status of the investigation in cloud sim. So we're going to get an alert. We want to look at the entity or portion of that alert within sumo logic search. And then we're going to want to update that investigation in Cloud Sim. So those are the pieces that we want to deal with here. And so let's go ahead and deal with them. So we're going to go back into uh, the Cloud Sim uh, environment. Hopefully, you still have it up and running. Um, if not, log back in, but you should be still open. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go to, although we might be OK, because what we want to do is we want to get back that persistence with initial access insight. And so I still have mine open, and I hope you do too. If you don't, remember, you'll just go up to the insights and then search for persistence with initial access. But ideally, you'll get to this screen. I'm going to kind of tap to answer pause just for a second, just to make sure everybody's together. OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the entity here. So on the, on the left-hand side of the screen, we have an IP address. So let's say in our you know, story here, uh, this IP address, we want to, not the story, this is uh, this scenario, we want to go ahead and take this IP address and look for it within Sumo Logic logs to see, is there anything interesting associated with that, this IP address? What actions maybe has this IP address been doing or, or what have you? So how do we take the IP address and bring it into Sumo Logic search? Now we could, if we're being honest, we could copy that IP address and paste it in Sumo Logic search, but that's not the, uh, the, the seamlessness that we want to demonstrate here. What we want you to do is go to the entity. Oh, oh I timed out. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Great timing. Uh, sorry about that. I was afraid that was going to happen. I could feel it. Uh, so going back into Cloud Sim, Enterprise, going back into Insights, going back into, uh, uh, just hoping it might appear there, um, contains uh, persistence with initial access. Going back, uh, like I like, uh, was shown earlier, the board view is much better. We're going to go to new, and I'm going to pick one here. And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go ahead and go to that entity. When I hover near it, three uh, six dots should appear. 
And then I should be able to go ahead and click on those six dots and then use an action that I want. Now we have a variety of different actions in here. We're not going to use all of them right now, of course, but we could add this IP to a watch list, a match list, a suppressed list. Uh, we could do a Google web search on it. Um, we could look it up uh, what view DNS thinks about it or virus total. Well, that's not exactly what we want to do right now. What we want to do right now is do a sumo logic search. So we're going to select sumo logic search from the, uh, the pull down. And then as might be expected, we're now searching on that IP address. So now we're in sumo logic, the traditional UI, and now we've searched for that IP address. And we see, for example, here, we see over the last 15 minutes, this IP address has shown up 2,700 times. And this is where it has shown up. Now, just because I see this IP address, does this mean it was a malicious hacking attempt trying to you know, bring down our system? No, of course not. But it's certainly showing up in those logs and might be, might be interesting. One thing I would add here is it's not a cloud sim feature, but log reduce is sometimes very useful to get a quick view of what is this IP doing? And it is. Well, okay. go ahead, Graham. Keep going. I'm just going to demonstrate it, but yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say also the the source categories that this is showing up in. If we go to the messages tab, another way you can say what's actually happening here is you can click on the source category at the very top. Um, yep, yeah, right there, and I can see. Okay, this is coming from uh, my Windows boxes, my Ubuntu. So it's going to give you a quick view of like where in your environment is this IP address, and then also log reduce back on the signatures tab can say, what is the shapes or the signatures for the places where this IP address is appearing? And I, it's sometimes even more useful to look at the bottom of the list where the IP has only done one specific thing. So um, it's kind of like a quick anomaly view of the repeated signatures at the top and then the rare signatures at the bottom. Yeah, no, that's, uh, thanks for pointing that out because it is a good use case for log reduce here. So what we did is we had all of our messages all, what was it, 2,700. We utilized the log reduce and then it's going to take those, boil them down to signatures that match and then group them together and give us a, a, a possible place that we might want to start off. And uh, like Graham was saying, we might want to look at the ones at the bottom because those are a little more unique. Now, another thing we're going to go ahead and do in here is we're going to do a new log search. Hopefully you've done a log search in here before. If you haven't, that's fine. But um, assuming there's, been, um, has... there's a couple of questions like okay. on the chat. Uh, how do you sli slice the logs? And I only show one record. Um, let's see. The one record. Maybe a time time frame thing. It could be. It's. I mean, it should show up in there. Um, yeah, if your time range is set to very low, you might only get one. Yeah, I would, and I would say for slicing the logs, um, which it looks like we mean parsing, um, there's a lot of ways you can parse in Sumo. And one thing to notice is a lot of these fields are already parsed for you on the left side because it's JSON. So when we talk about parsing, there's an auto parsing feature for JSON. You can also right click on, for example, the source IP address field and in the actual log. So you can right click on the key name to say parse this source IP. Um, and that will happen if you click on source IP. Yep, so you can parse this oh, way. Gotcha. And then yes, you can definitely use parse regex. Parse anchor is another one where you highlight a text-based log if it's like a single line. I recommend our fundamentals course, Sumo Logic. Fundamentals and Josh, can you actually just show the home tab and then the certification just so they can see where to find all those other certifications? Yeah, and we're going to show this later, of course, but uh, this yeah. is where um, we'll get into here. But this is where we have some other courses that you can take. Um, yep. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, and this this of course focuses on how to use Cloud Sim, but we have a ton of other great stuff like fundamentals and search mastery for how to use the core platform once you're in that side of it. Yep. Cool. All right, let me get, uh, get back out of here. And so what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and um, create a, um, oh, where's my query? 
sorry, there it is, uh, in the lab guide. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that query in there. And so we're gonna do a new log search. I'm gonna do a new log search, paste the query in. And then uh, go ahead and search for that. Oh, uh, oh, this is a, let me just correct this. This isn't a kind of an artifact of um, pasting from the PDF here. Let me just make sure this runs first. Then I'll explain what we're doing. I just want to, yeah, I was afraid of this. Uh, let me bump this up. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to put the IP address in here. That's where I'm doing this wrong. So I want to take that IP address and I want to plug it into here, into this query. And so what we're doing with this query is we're going ahead and we're looking at our security record information. We're doing a time slice and we're looking at the specific data. When we do the time slice, we're breaking our data into aggregation. Um, make sure it appears here. There we go. We're starting to see our data in groups of, uh, in this case, one hour buckets, if you will. And so that's what this is being presented to us right now are those essentially buckets. And so what we're now seeing is this IP address has shown up related to these two um, uh, 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 targeted associations, I guess. So the IP address has shown up in CrowdStrike has shown up in proof point. And so this might be an illustration that this is a bad IP address, unsecure, um, causing malicious behavior, um, you know, could be, could be many things. And so that's what we want to show there. This query language as, uh, you know, discussed by uh, Graham, much more uh, covered in detail in our um, uh, a few different classes, fundamentals, uh, search mastery certainly goes over this. Um, and so would you know strongly encourage you to take those uh, and participate in those. All right, let's see, anything else in here? Um, oh, and then uh, finishing the investigation. So as it says here, uh, let's go ahead and, and do that portion. So Let's say we did our investigation, we looked at this IP address and we find, all right, this IP address is you know, scary, it's concerning. What do we now do with this stuff? So what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and uh, finish our investigation. So we're gonna go back to Cloud Sim and we can go ahead and utilize these sections here. So the status, we can change it. Maybe it's in progress now because we're working on it. Um, Maybe it, uh, you know, something else. We can go ahead and assign it to ourselves. So maybe I want to take this, or maybe I even want to assign it to somebody else. Um, probably should let them know I'm assigning it to them before I do, but we could do that as well. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and close the insight. And so to close the insight, we can either, two ways to do it, uh, we can go to the action, oh, excuse me, we can go to the status and we can mark it as closed, or we can just select close insight. And we can put a resolution, which we should. So that way we can you know, provide somebody some information about what's going on. The system is also going to use this to learn how we close this and possibly what to do with it in the future. So uh, putting the right uh, uh, resolution is going to be appropriate too. Uh, make sure that the, like I said, the machine kind of learns here. So is it resolved? Was it a false positive? This is all valuable information that we want to pass on. And so for today, it, it you know, doesn't really matter, of course, what we choose. And then we'll go ahead and close it. And choosing that, that selection there is how our global competence score works. So and definitely be sure to, to close that out if you want the global competence score information. Yes, so this portion that uh, Graham was alluding to earlier is based off the, the calculations in there. So yeah, I wanna make sure that that's uh, um, uh, correct, uh, set correctly. All right, um, let's see, let's, uh, let's see, we were done with lab three. Verifying we got through it, we did. So let's go ahead, let's go back to our deck here, just once again to kind of keep us on track. 
And so what we saw in lab three was kind of the following. So we used the Sumo logic search, which was helpful to figure out, um, to look at that IP address. We used that index security record as part of the query to look at only that portion that was ingested by Cloud Sim. So we, rather than looking at everything, we wanted to look at just that portion. And so we were using that as a bit of a, a filtering, if you will. Um, and then we used, speaking of filters, uh, some filters within the query itself to fine tune it and make it more appropriate to what we specifically wanted. All right. So now we're going to talk about customizing and tuning your Cloud Sim environment, like the title says here. So what are Cloud Sim rules? So once you've investigated, uh, once you completed a few investigations, you may want to add or modify the rules, data sources, match lists, and other pieces of the Cloud Sim puzzle. These modifications can help further reduce false positives or alert you even faster. The most common thing to customize are rules and insights. Rules are one of the most important pieces of Cloud Sim's threat detection engine. There we go. All the record. Oh, sorry, where am I? There we go. Sorry, I just having a little trouble with my presentation here. You can still see the Cloud Sim rule stuff. Okay, good. Um, uh, there we go. So rules are the most, one of the most important pieces of the Cloud Sim uh, threat detection engine. All the records that are ingested in Cloud Sim are compared to every rule in Cloud Sim. Remember, records are normalized log messages. If there's a match, an entity is extracted and a signal is created. These entities are tracked and may correlate with other signals to create an insight, which is where most threat investigations begin. And so that's where we get the record and the signal. Now, in regards to custom rules, you don't have to write your rules from scratch. Sumo Logic, the content team is going to create and maintain hundreds of out of the box rules to get you started. Those rules are going to be updated frequently, often every, every day. And you can see the most frequent updates in the announcement page within the environment. This is something we show uh, primarily the admins. But if we go up to this help with a question mark and the announcements, we can see all those new rules that have been added. So here we see a bunch of different rules that were added. Uh, recently. So this is a way for us to stay up to date on those rules. Now, sometimes you do need to write a rule from scratch. Um, you might want to do this if your system has a source that isn't covered by the default rules, or if you're looking for a threat that isn't covered by the default rules. Custom rules aren't updated or deleted by Sumo Logic during the regular updates. They're independent from the default rules. If you do decide to create a custom rule or rule tuning expression, those rules will not be modified or deleted by Sumo's regular updates. Now, what are some of the types of custom rules that are available? Well, here are four of them. Match rule. This is the most simple one. It's going to take a simple Boolean statement and check if it's true or false. Then an entity will be extracted and signal is created. For example, you might simply look whether an IP address matches on a banned list. Yes or no, true or false, very straightforward. But you can get more involved. Threshold rules. These are going to be triggered when a match is found a certain number of times. For example, if one failed login attempt is acceptable, but five isn't, then a threshold rule would fire after the fifth failed login attempt. Chain rules. These are going to fire when certain different events occur in a certain time window. For example, if you want to look, uh, uh, if you want to look for five failed login attempts followed by one successful login attempt within a one year one hour period, then a chain rule would be appropriate. Finally, there's aggregation rules. These are going to be triggered when up to six different events accumulate over time. For example, if you want a rule that looks for a large number of event types from a single device IP, then you would use an aggregation rule. 
aggregation rules are not as common, but certainly worth telling you about. Come on, mouse. There we go. Sorry, I just having flaky mouse issues today. Now, what I'm showing here on the screen is a blank rule template in Cloud Sim. So this is what it looks like. On the left-hand side, we have our if, and on the right-hand side, we have our then. And that's really what we're kind of filling in the blanks here. So when a rule is created, you need to configure the condition it matches, the if portion. It's typically going to be a short piece of code and will depend on the rule type you're creating. You can also add a rule tuning expression, which are going to be small exceptions to rules appended with an end statement. Once you set the conditions for the rule to fire, you can configure the signal that will be created. This includes details like name, entity, description, and MITRE attack tactics and techniques you're looking for with your rule. And then one more. There we go. Uh, finally, you also configure the rule severity score. This is going to be on a scale from 0 to 10, with 10 being the most severe. You may choose a severity of 0 if you want to monitor something, but not necessarily create insights. Higher severity scores are more likely to trigger insights. So what are some best practices when creating custom rules? First, you want to check the existing rules in your system. Sumo Logic already has built-in rules, hundreds of them, and so you may not need to write a new one. Or you may need to only make small changes to existing rules, like adding a rule tuning expression or adjusting a severity score. Next, you need to know your system well. You need to understand the schema um, and the log mappings of all the records that are ingested into Cloud Sim to write simple, effective rules. You may want to work with an administrator on your team who knows this so to can help you write better rules. In addition to the system's details about log mappings and other data, you need to understand your, your company's risk tolerance, their appetite, and their priorities regarding risk. So some companies might want to monitor a large amount of outbound traffic, but not consider it a threat. They might assign the rule a severity of zero. Another company might be alarmed by outbound traffic and consider it data exfiltration and assign the same rule a severity of five. Both are correct, just like I said, risk appetite, risk tolerance. You want to understand all the types of rules. If your use case requires a chain rule and you're writing a threshold rule, that might not be the best experience and you might not be in as, as efficient or as effective as you could be. As a best practice, when you do write a new rule or edit an existing one, make small changes. For example, instead of decreasing a severity score from an eight to a two, try decreasing it from an eight to a seven and monitoring the change for a while to get a better feel for what's going on. And then finally, the last one here is the best practice around saving all new rules as a prototype. This is going to allow you to monitor the rules behavior without creating new insights and alerts and is highly encouraged um, when you create um, a new rule. All right. A few more slides here, and then we'll get back into those labs. So talking about rule tuning here. Adding a rule tuning expression is an exist, uh, to an existing rule is one of the easiest and most common ways to customize your rules. A rule tuning expression is an end statement that you add to an existing rule. It's usually simple logic that you add to rules. And as a best practice, you should use rule tuning expressions when you have a small number of specific exceptions to existing rules. With rule tuning, you can modify existing rules without rewriting them from scratch. This lets you customize them without a lot of work. Once you've written a tuning expression, you can apply that tuning expression to multiple rules. You can also apply multiple tuning expressions to each rule. So there's really, they're very flexible in that regard. We're going to learn how to apply one tuning expression to multiple rules. And we're also going to learn how to apply multiple tuning expressions to one rule today in those labs shortly. When you use rule tuning instead of custom rules, your tuning expressions are retained when Sumo updates that rule. So you'll still get the advantage of the rule Sumo pushes out to all users.
Now creating insights. Once a rule is in your system, whether it's a custom rule or one that you created or one that was created by the Sumo team, Cloud Sim is going to use that to create signals. If a record matches a rule, an entity is extracted from the record. The entity might be something like an IP address, a username, a domain name. It's going to tell you who the potential threat is. Once an entity is in the Cloud Sim system, Cloud Sim is going to track the total severity score of signals associated with each entity as an activity score. Once that activity score gets high enough, usually over 12 by default, then an insight will be created. All right. Now, here's a really cool uh, visual example of uh, insight clustering that I think you'll appreciate. So let's say we have 13 signals currently in our system from the last two weeks, and that's going to be represented by the, uh, the uh, different um, shapes on the right-hand side of the screen. So each shape on the slide is going to represent a different signal. Some of the signals are going to be entity A, those pink triangle. Those green squares are going to be entity B. Those green circle, uh, the blue circles, excuse me, are entity C. So we have our pink triangles, we have our green squares, we have our blue circles. Based on the rule that fired, each of the signals will have a severity score, which is going to be the number inside the object or the shape. Now, by default, an entity needs an activity score of 12 before an insight is created. The activity score is going to be that sum of the severity scores from the last 14 days. So, as mentioned, the pink triangles, there's three of them, a five, six, and a seven. The blue circles, severities of a one, a one, a two, a two, and a three. And then the green squares. Those have the severity of one, two, two, three, and four. Now, of those signals, which are going to cluster together into an insight? The blue circles, the green squares, the pink triangles, all of them, some of them, none of them. Go ahead and you know, think about it for a moment. You have not blue on the chat. All right, let's, let's, see, let's see what we got here. So good to see some people are answering. So let's go through it and, and see what we get together. And the images are forming already. So let's go through each one. Let's go through entity A, those pink triangles. Those are going to cluster into an insight. Why or how? Well, even though there's only three signals there, they're relatively high severity scores. The severity, the activity score, excuse me, for entity A, those pink triangles, is an 18, 7 plus 6 plus 5. And so those cluster together into an insight. Entity B, which are our green squares towards the bottom, these are going to cluster into an insight as well. The severity scores are pretty low, one, two, threes, and fours, but there's a bunch of them. And so if they add up to 12, 12 is 12, which meets our, our uh, creation of an insight. Now, what about those blue circles? Well, somebody said not blue. Why did they say not blue? Why do those not cluster together into an insight? The reason is CloudSim is still going to track them as an entity, so that's going to still occur, but they're not going to be clustered together into an insight because the activity score is 10. 10 is below 12, and so it's not an insight yet. If there was another rule with a severity score of two or higher that triggered with that entity, then it would cluster into an insight. And so what we want to show here is the fact that you can have a large number of low severity scores, uh, a low, excuse me, a large number of low severity score signals that won't create an insight. You can have a small number of high severity score signals that do create an insight. And so you want to keep this in mind when you're configuring those severity scores for your custom rules. All right, two more slides and then we're back to the labs. Uh, custom insights. Now, what if you do want to be alerted right away when a certain rule is triggered? Or you don't want to use that default activity score of 12? Well, that's what custom insights allows you to do. It lets you create insights based on a one specific signal or a chain of signals, regardless of their severity score. This is great for known threats specific to your system. And you won't need to change any of your existing rules or insights. They're going to keep working normally. You won't have to adjust the, de the default settings for your activity scores. So I wanted to point that out as a, as a helpful feature of custom insights. And then finally, remember Cloud Sim's out-of-the-box rules and insights are great, but we want you to have the flexibility to customize your environment. So we've looked at three simple ways to customize Cloud Sim's 
rules and insights. The first is the rule tuning expressions are going to be simple ways to add small exceptions and other clauses to existing rules. Second, custom rules are going to uh, let you write logic that's unique to the system to cover threats or data sources that aren't covered by built-in rules. Finally, custom insights allow you to get alerts based on just one rule or chain of rules. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's do some hands-on labs. And we're going to finish out our lab book with these next uh, couple labs. So we're going to do lab four, five, and six. And so let's go ahead and do them together. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of my slide deck. I'm going to go back into uh, my heads up display in Cloud Sim. Hopefully it's still open and might, I might have to log back in. Yep, I do need to log back in. I apologize for that. Um, in hindsight, our timeouts are a little too uh, strict. Um, so I'll be addressing that soon. Um, so let me go ahead and log back in. Uh, Sept 2021. Okay, now I'm back just back into Sumo Logic. Now I'm going to go back into that Cloud Sim Enterprise. So back into the heads up display. And now go ahead and look at lab four. So in lab four, we're going to create a rule tuning expression. And so to do so, we're going to go to the top of the screen. I'm going to select content. And we're going to select rule tuning. Now here we're going to see some tuning expressions that may have been configured, possibly by somebody earlier, a few minutes ago, getting ahead in the labs, which is perfectly fine, good to see. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and create one together. So we're going to select create. Now the reason we're doing this, the lab four gives us that little scenario there of let's say we're updating firewalls in our system and we don't want to trigger unnecessary alerts. So this is why we're writing the rule tuning expression, which is going to allow us to bypass firewall related rules. So there is a reason why we're doing this and that that is the reason. So we're going to go ahead and create that rule tuning expression. For the name, we're going to go ahead and as it says here, using the naming convention of uh, tuning expression. And then we're going to use our initials and we're going to use the uh, three digit number that we're um, uh, using. And if you leave the three digit number out, number out, that's fine. But I'll put your initials in there. That would uh, help me out later. Um, and now we're going to fill in, essentially fill in the blanks here. So we're going to tune selected rules and we want to look for a rule type. So what we want to look for as described is we want to look for those firewall rules. So when I type firewall, I should see firewall stuff, stuff that matches the criteria. And we want to specifically look for the AWS network firewall alert, specifically the one that has training uh, next to it. So we want to look for that alert and we want to select it. Now we're going to go ahead and include the portion that we're gonna fill right, right here. So what we're gonna fill out here is the portion of to only match records that match the expression. So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and add ourselves as an, as an exception. So we're gonna go ahead and put this portion that's in the uh, text of the lab and paste it into this section right here. Now we're gonna modify it in a few different ways. The first thing is by default when we cut it from a PDF, not by default, but just typically, when we cut it from a PDF, the apostrophes get weird. So we want to delete the apostrophes and re-add them so that the text appears in red. Once again, that's just more of a cutting from a PDF thing rather than a, a sumo thing. Um, and so now we have that address in here, and then we want specifically to go ahead and put uh, the uh, unique number that we're using today. Now, in this case, as it says here, and you may have noticed, you may not have, either way is fine, we're using uh, uh, exclamation point equals. And what we're doing that for is that's going to be an is not. By using this, it's allowing us to create an exception. So we're basically saying match all the records except those that have a training plus analyst 234 in it. So rather than an equals, it's kind of the opposite of the equals, it's is not equals. 
once we have that all filled out properly, we can go ahead and click submit. If we don't have it filled out properly, we're going to have an exclamation point, uh, a triangle with an orange exclamation point uh, right next to submit, which would tell us what we did wrong, but I don't have that, so I did good. Going to go ahead and click submit. And now I should see the rule tuning expression has been created successfully. I should also be able to go back to content and rule tuning, and I should see my rule. Uh, uh, oh, I need to refresh. <laughs> there we go. And I see yours as well. So mine is I don't know, wherever, somewhere in here, there's mine, there's yours, so on and so forth. So now we see those rules in there. All right, so what we're gonna do now, uh, any questions, of course, please ask. Uh, Ona and, and Graham have been great about answering questions in chat. So I think we're, we're kind of good. Um, so I'm gonna keep going with the labs and then uh, we'll have time for a little Q&A at the end anyhow. So let's do lab five. Lab five is gonna create a custom match rule. So we're gonna go ahead and go back into rules, content and rules. And we're gonna create a new rule. So when we go into rules, as a reminder, these are all the rules that have been set up. The majority of them have been set up by Sumo Logic, another 20 probably just by our you know, test users that have been playing around in here. Um, but now we're gonna go ahead and create the rule. Now for this match rule, what we're concerned about here is traffic coming from a particular IP address that's not covered by some of our default rules. So we wanna create a match rule that's gonna look for a specific IP address. And so let's go ahead and do that. We're in rules. So once again, content and rules, we're gonna click create. We're gonna be presented with those different types of rules that we can utilize. Do we wanna do a match rule? Do we wanna do a threshold rule, et cetera, et cetera? Well, for today, we wanna do a match rule because we wanna match an IP address, kind of a Boolean statement, true or false. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose match and click create. I'm gonna now need to name my rule. So once again, we want you to utilize that naming expression of match rule uh, initials and then number. And now we wanna specify, well, we need to specify both the ifs and the then. So let's go ahead and start to do so. So when a record matches this expression, well, the expression is in step five here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that device underscore IP and paste it in right there. Once again, I'm gonna go back and modify those uh, uh, um, uh, exclamation point, uh, parentheses there. Um, uh, quotes rather, sorry. Um, and uh, so that it shows up in red instead, just an artifact of copying from PDFs or, uh, or sometimes Google Docs. Um, and still have more to fill in, but you'll notice here that exclamation point with that three, letting us know that there is more information required here, which is helpful. Kind of knew it already, but it's still helpful. Now, what we wanna do here is we wanna add a tuning expression. For the tuning expression, we wanna look for the one that we just created in lab four. So we should hope it should be in, because uh, these are in, um, yeah, you should be in here. So I'm gonna find mine, there's mine, JB234. So I'm adding that to an expression. Now I have my, le my left side done, so my if. So if the criteria matches all this, then what's gonna happen? Well, now we're gonna fill that out. We wanna create a signal. We wanna create a signal on the entity of device IP, which is gonna act as our uh, kind of our, uh, not unique identifier, but our, uh, our um, uh, consistent thing that we're looking at, those IP addresses. We're gonna go ahead and utilize a name. So as the name uh, is mentioned there, we're gonna put signal uh, JB234 uh, again. The description, uh, the summary and description, we can leave from, uh, we can leave out, or I'm just gonna put test just to put something in there. Uh, we're gonna leave this constant severity. And now we can go ahead and pl play with the severity score. What severity score do we wanna apply to this signal that's being created? A zero, a 10, a five, a, you know, pick something that's appropriate. In this case, this is a pretty low severity. So, you know, if this shows up, it shouldn't be a 10, 
if you want to play with a 10, by all means, go ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and select, a, I'll select a two. I know it's led to select a one in the, uh, in the lab, but I'll, I'm feeling a little rebellious. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, finish up with our tag. So we're going to identify that MITRE ATT&CK framework um, that uh, we uh, want to specify here. So we're going to use tactic. And then we're going to look for the tactic of initial access. And we're just playing. So if you want to choose something else, that's fine. And then we're going to make sure that we collect this, save this rule as a prototype. Um, that's that best practice that allows us to have the rule run um, and not create any insights off of it to start with. So we're going to click that, save this rule as a prototype. I don't have that exclamation here, which is a good sign. So I probably did things correctly. Um, I'm going to click submit just to make sure. At least I have all my fields entered and now I have created a rule. Now, once again, we can go back to content. We can go back to rules. We can refresh and we should see our rule. Um, Actually, we should well. Well, I'll have to filter for it. Uh, I just want. I'm just. I was just hoping it came. Just popped up, nice and easy at the top. But if I look for my uh, JB two three four, uh, there is my. Oh, where's my? Yeah, there's my match rule. So here it is. And hopefully, you see yours as well. All right, finally, we wanted to wrap things up with lab six, which is creating a custom insight. So as kind of with the scenario, let's say you wanna be alerted right away when a new custom match rule is triggered. Let's create a custom insight that's gonna look for that rule and only that rule. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to content and this time we're gonna select custom insights. We did the other two previously um, and we're done with them. So we're gonna do custom insights now. It's gonna show us those custom insights that may exist already. These are other individuals testing, but we wanna create our own. So we're gonna go click on create. And like we've been doing, uh, you know, essentially kind of filling in the blanks here. So for the name, we're gonna call this custom insight uh, JB234. And then we're going to configure the left and the right side, the if and the thens. So when signals are created for the following, we wanna select one or more of the rules. And we should be able to find our rule in there. If you can't find yours, you can use mine. Once again, we're just kind of playing around, but you, you should be able to find it in there. <clears throat> uh, we're gonna choose the in any order here. And then we're going to fill out the right hand side of the screen. So when this signal is matching the rule and all that, when is an insight created? Well, now we're going to configure that portion. So what is the insight going to be called? Well, we can create our own name or we can use the one that's provided to us, which is the name that we entered up to the top, which is fine for now. We can provide the description. Once again, we're just going to use test here because we're not very creative. We can choose a severity. In this case, it's going to be low, but we could certainly mark this as high if we felt it was appropriate to do so. And then we're going to specify those tags associated with the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And we're going to use that same tactic we've been using of the uh, initial access. Once again, no uh, orange exclamation point, which is a good sign. And so now I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. It's been created successfully. But once again, I can also just go ahead and verify that by going to content custom insights and uh, refreshing. And I can either search or I could probably just scroll down and find mine in here somewhere. There's mine. Cool. Uh, there's JA. Uh, let's see some of the other guys out there. AS is there, et cetera. So seeing some of you uh, participating, which is great. All right. So that concludes uh, lab six and the labs as a whole. So um, let me go back to my deck. 
Yeah, that's actually, that's kind of it. <laughs> um, so gonna open it up to questions. Uh, we still have the exam to take and I'm gonna talk about that in a few moments, but any other questions? Um, been many good questions so far. And uh, like I said earlier, Ona and Graham have been answering them. So I think we're, we're kind of up to date there. Um, any others that might be related to what we're talking about or not? All right, so I'm going to keep going into the exam. If there are questions, please ask. We're going to be here for a little bit, so don't don't be shy. Um, we want you to get answers. So, um, but let's let's talk about the exam. Let's get get that underway. So, for this next portion, we're going to be talking about the assessment or the exam, as I referred to. It's going to consist of 20 plus questions, and you're going to have 60 minutes to take it. You're not going to need all 60 minutes, but you do have it allocated to you. So, you know, if you don't rush, but uh, you're just not going to need that much time. Uh, you need a 70 to pass it. And this is going to be an open resource exam. So like our other exams, uh, they all are uh, open resource. So you can utilize uh, Sumo Logic documentation, uh, utilize the labs that we did today, uh, utilize a Google search if that's going to help you. Um, and so feel free to use those resources. You have access to them in the real world. And for an exam, I think you should have them as well. And so that's why you do. Um, so you know, like I said, feel free to use those resources. Um, for the exam, I'm going to go ahead and show you where it is. Uh, did it get locked out again? Um, let me go back into this. So we're going to want to make sure that we go into Sumo Logic itself, not into the sim environment for this. And we're going to want to make sure that we go in or log in utilizing our personal or professional or corporate Sumo Logic account. So not training user. We don't want training analyst 754 getting credit for the exam. We want Jennifer or Bob or Bill. So make sure you log in with your, like I said, personal professional Sumo account, which everybody should have one here. If you don't let us know, uh, you can sign up for a free one, but I assume everybody does. So once you're logged in to Sumo Logic, um, you're going to go to the certification uh, section. Uh, Graham was pointing this out earlier, and now we're going to actually use it. So uh, hopefully you remember, but if not, I'll show it to you. So we're going to go home, we're going to go to certification, and we're going to click get certified. When we do, this is going to take us into our learn portal. One thing that's going to be shown right at the top of the screen are the credentials that are going to be used for the next month. So on October, it's on October 1st, we do it the first uh, Monday of the month, uh, the new credentials will come out. And so you can grab them right here. You can also just email us at training at sumologic.com for those as well. But the portion we're interested here in, uh, in the learn uh, section here are these uh, courses down below. And so here we have courses based on what you're interested in. Today's conversation was around Cloud Sim. And so we're going to go to the very bottom and click on Cloud Sim. Under Cloud Sim is some self-paced content, uh, but we have the exams and that's what the focus is for today. So for today, we want to choose the Cloud Sim Fundamentals exam. There is a Cloud Sim Administration exam and that's not meant for you. Um, if you want to take it, of course you can, but probably encourage you to take the course with it first. So I uh, really want to stress everyone going to that Fundamentals exam. Go in and click on that exam. It's going to give you some um, kind of information here. Uh, register for free. As a reminder, the exam is free for you, free for your company, so no fees at this point. We're going to register for free. We're going to read this little blurb, uh, which is basically what I just told you about the 20 questions, 60 minutes, kind of all that stuff. Just want to show you one step that's just uh, just uh, just as a reminder if you, if you haven't taken the exam with us. So you're going to start the exam. You're going to get your questions and you're going to submit all your answers. And you're going to get your score and hopefully better than I did. Once you get your score, it's important that you click the submit results button. If you don't, you won't get credit for the exam. So even if you passed and don't click submit results, it won't be recorded. So um, just weird behavior. It's not really our learning system here, uh, but just wanted to make you aware of that. So make sure that you do click that submit results once you're, you've completed the exam. Um, Let's see what else in here. Uh, as a reminder, um, once you're done with the exam, uh, go ahead and send us your certificate to training at sumologic.com. And then we're going to go ahead and send you a, um, a Uber Eats uh, gift card. So $15 uh, Uber Eats uh, voucher. Um, 
uh, how many attempts do you have to take it? As many as you need. So uh, yeah, that's the answer. Um, the password, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using your personal Sumo Logic account. Um, and when I say personal, one that's probably been provided to you by corporate or your employer or you signed up for. Um, so those are the credentials you'll wanna use. Um, let's see, that's kind of about it. So certainly feel free to start the exam. Um, some of you probably started before I was, was done talking and that, that's fine as, as well. Um, oh, how do you get the bag? Let me go ahead and paste that in. So I'll put this link in, but if you don't uh, um, remember the link or whatever, um, you can also just email us at training at sumologic.com. Let me go ahead and paste that in. All right, what else before, not before, but let's get you underway. So yeah, let's start the exam. Um, so, they, yeah, just, just a few things I'm seeing yeah, in the chat. Um, please, Graham. So in terms of taking this exam, is it correct that uh, you should log out of the training environment and then log into your company? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That, yeah. Sure that, that, that you're not the training user. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're getting the... Um, if you need to change your name, that is something that your admin will have to do in your Sumo account. But if you email us, I think we can try to take care of it. Um, no guarantees. If you're getting the missing cookie error, um, you may not have uh, authenticated your email address. And so if you click that help icon, Josh in the, in the black bar on the bottom left, if you click help, and then you go to community, um, there will be a link. If you've never been to community before, it'll ask you to verify your email address and that's how you'll verify your email address. And once that email is verified, then you should be able to get into the training environment. Yep, that's a weird anomaly for some users, um, sometimes using SSO, but it does happen. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up, both of you. Just, just wanna make sure Swami, you messaged me. Are you able to log into your corporate um, Sumo account and then access the certification that way? If not, just let us know. Yep. Yeah, I'll be hanging out here uh, monitoring the chat. There were a few people that had some questions about particular slides, Josh. So if we could go back to some of those slides. Um, someone wanted to see the custom rules and when they're used slide. Um, uh, custom rules and when they're used slide is this one? Um, that was the best practices. Oh, I this one? This one, yeah, the rule types. Um, there's that, but then there's also um, the docs, and that doc uh, site actually um, has the same information but more in depth. So let me go find that. Yeah, that, that's a better... Uh... Better help article. Uh, uh, no, uh, just more more in depth. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. So here in the chat, um, there's the CSC rules, and you'll see examples of every rule type. And oh, cool! Uh, you have put, you put it in perfect. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Uh, but if you wanted to see that slide, that slide is Josh has it up now. Yeah. It's it's more or less the same information. This is a very condensed summary. All right, so let's let's continue with the exam. Um, Ona and I and, and Graham will be hanging out for a little bit. Um, if there's other questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, but otherwise, thank you for attending. I hope you found today helpful. Um, good luck on the certification. Um, hopefully enjoy that meal on us. Um, and, um, oh, another thing I, some people asked about, uh, uh, this recording as well as the slides will be uploaded to the Illuminate uh, portal, uh, I'll say within 24 hours, I might be pushing it a little bit, um, but within the next day or so, um, and so that, that way you'll be able to access everything else. All right, so I'm going to put myself on mute now, and uh, thank you again. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining, and um, best of luck, and uh, hope to see you at another training. You guys had a uh, great question, so certainly made it, uh, made it interesting for me. So thank you again, everybody.